We're in the historic port city of Plymouth, where for hundreds of years, ships have set sail to all corners of the globe on various voyages of discovery. It was actually here where on the 27th of December, 1831, Charles Darwin on HMS Beagle began his journey of discovery around the world, which became the most important voyage in the history of science. The Beagle laid anchor about a kilometer or so away from the docks here at a place called Barn Pool. And Charles wrote that he was so excited before the ship weighed anchor and set off that he had heart palpitations and pains in his chest. But he didn't tell anyone because he was afraid that it would prevent him from taking part in the voyage and that he'd be left behind. Charles obviously began his journey and set sail to the Galapagos. Well, we're not quite going that far. We're going to the Scilly Isles as our next step of our journey. So it's time to get aboard and set sail. As we left Plymouth Harbour, I wondered what thoughts went through Charles Darwin's mind. He wrote in his journal with amazement at the wildlife that he saw during the first stages of his voyage. The Darwin 200 team are equally keen and enthusiastic to set sail. Poor old Charles Darwin soon experienced the ocean waves and the reality of sailing. He was dreadfully seasick and even confessed in his own journal that he wasn't cut out to be a sailor. The Darwin 200 crew also experienced rough weather, but we worked together as a team and overcame the waves with a smile and a cup of tea. This is a British summer, after all. Out there up ahead are the Scilly Isles. They're famed for their sun and warm weather, but they're notorious to mariners for their dangerous waters. Over the last few centuries, literally hundreds of ships have been wrecked on the islands and in fact some shipwrecks still continue to this very day and it's easy to see why we're actually only a couple of nautical miles away from the Scilly Isles but as you can see up ahead they're completely invisible hidden in the sea mist the fog continued to thicken and we were forced to wait at anchor offshore. During the night, the fog has descended and you can only now see a couple of hundred meters. This really underscores why these waters were just so dangerous, and why there were so many shipwrecks. Even today, we have to ring this bell every 60 seconds as a warning to other ships that might be approaching so they can listen out and hear us in the fog. The young scientists waited patiently for the weather to improve so they could go ashore and begin their research. Stay tuned for the next Darwin 200 episode to follow the next stages of their research.